Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Two men are facing charges following an early morning stabbing in Sioux Falls. Police say just before midnight, the victim was going to back in his driveway when another car allegedly parked in the driveway. When the victim asked the driver to move, police say the passenger got out and started fighting with the victim. The suspect got back in the car and took off. That's when the victim noticed he had been stabbed. He was taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. Police caught up with the suspect a short time later. 27 year old Nicholas Turning Bear was arrested and charged with aggravated assault, threatening law enforcement, DWI and reckless driving. 24 year old Mondre Clown Adams was also arrested for DWI and open container. Construction on the University of South Dakota's 31 and a quarter million dollar mil wellness center expansion is underway. Construction started on April 10 for the new home for USD's swimming and diving team. USD is adding over 45,000 square feet to its wellness center. The addition will include a new indoor competition pool, aquatic obstacle course, hot tub, steam room, locker rooms, coaches offices and more. Grammy Award winning country music artist Carly Pierce will perform on September 2nd at the South Dakota State Fair. Pierce is a 2023 Academy of Country Music nominee for Female Artist of the Year. Grandstand ticket presales start on June 5th. General public ticket sales will begin on June 20th. Turning now to weather, we are looking at and talking about snow this midday, aren't we, Scott? Yeah, we do have that snow falling in eastern and northeastern South Dakota. So much snow that we have a winter weather advisory in northeastern Kettleland. We've had this wintry mix in Sioux Falls. Last I checked, maybe a little bit of sleet thrown in there as well. But let's talk about Watertown, where we do have the snow. Cloudy skies overhead, the visibility down to about a mile. Temperature at 33 degrees. We might be able to pick up an inch or two in uh, Watertown for today. As you see the widespread snow from near Huron, east to Brookings and to the north. Looks like it's just east of Aberdeen over Sisseton right now. And here's that winter weather advisory. This actually takes us to uh, Saturday morning, two to four inches of snowfall. Keep in mind who the strong northwest winds will have probably for the next couple of days. As we do take a look at southeastern Kettleland, there's that wintry mix over Sioux Falls. Light snow showers mentioned Brookings and Huron and areas such as Madison, Mitchell, maybe a couple of snow showers just to the east and staying in the form of rain in extreme southeastern South Dakota. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s right now. I think we'll stay more or less steady in many locations as you see that northwest wind. 15 to 25 miles per hour sustained with higher wind gusts. And again, Watertown's visibility down to a mile, down to five in Brookings, and Sioux Falls coming in with two miles of visibility. This is over the next 12 hours. A lot of this will try to lift to the northeast, but northeastern Kettleland will continue with this wintry mix around 3, 4 o'clock. And then as we get into this evening and tonight, be on lookout for more snow showers in north central and northeastern South Dakota. They will eventually move to the south and to the southeast as we get into tomorrow. Here's that forecast for today. Temperatures, as I said, remaining steady. A lot of these numbers from the 40s and 50s probably already hit. Tonight, temperatures in the upper 20s to the lower 30s. And then for tomorrow, we will have that combination of rain and snow showers. A little bit of sunshine thrown in there as well. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s with our strong northwest winds. Megan will be in, in a couple of minutes and she'll have your seven day forecast for you. Dan. Thank you, Scott. Strong storms with tornadoes and hail have killed at least two people in the central United States. The National Weather Service began issuing tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings Wednesday evening in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Iowa. Central Oklahoma saw tornadoes with two deaths and several injuries reported in the town of Cole. Homes and other buildings were badly damaged or destroyed. Reports say an additional round of tornado-producing storms is expected tonight. The Iowa Senate signed off on a school transparency and parents' rights bill yesterday with a party line vote. The bill prohibits education on gender identity and sexual orientation in grades K through 6. Parents must also give consent for a student to be identified with pronouns that differ from the person's biological sex. In addition, the bill allows parents to challenge books available in school libraries. Congress is running out of time to raise the country's debt limit to pay for the bills it has already passed. Failure to do so could have a big impact on the U.S. economy. Nicole D'Antonio has details from Capitol Hill. America has a $31 trillion debt, and Washington is on the clock. 
Congress has until sometime this summer to raise the debt limit or have the country default on its debt for the first time in history. We are introducing the Limit, Save, Grow Act of 2023. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy introduced a plan Wednesday that would raise the debt ceiling by one and a half trillion dollars or through March of next year, whichever comes first. But it would prohibit the implementation of President Biden's student loan forgiveness program, and it would put in place work requirements for programs such as Medicaid and SNAP. House Republicans are taking action to lift the debt limit, to limit government spending, save taxpayers money, and grow the economy. Speaker McCarthy wants to vote on the bill next week, but he can only afford to lose four GOP votes and still pass the bill. Right now, it's not clear if he can get enough votes. Some Republicans, like Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona, say they want to see more cuts before they'll vote yes, while Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett says he won't support any plan to raise the limit, adding he's prepared to go over the cliff. Meanwhile, the White House insists Congress needs to raise the limit with no strings attached. Our position continues to be to not negotiate, negotiate over default. Uh, this is something that is the responsibility, uh, the obligation of congressional members. They were able to do this three times in the last administration. Even if McCarthy can get his plan through the House, it is dead on arrival in the Senate. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Capitol Hill. At least one Democratic senator applauded Speaker McCarthy's plan. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin says that President Biden needs to negotiate with Speaker McCarthy to find a solution to the debt limit.